You can also do your session in interpretive dance if you need to. Yeah, that may that may be an interesting idea to do, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is oh hey there we are hey Gabor how are you doing today hey I'm good how are you all right so this is uh, what I like to call jams Drupal camps I have the pleasure and the privilege to see a bunch of people do presentations throughout the year spend a lot of time with people in the Drupal community and I thought at some point that there's a lot of stuff going on. There are a lot of good sessions going on that deserve some more attention, that deserve, um, you know, that people in our community would find useful, would find interesting, would find exciting. And some percentage of those, maybe even if they're films, maybe even if they're um, on some camp website somewhere, they're not easy to find. And if you don't know to go to a particular site, you might not know that, that stuff exists. And I just thought that it would be nice to get some more sessions online and some more people talking about Drupal online and get some resources that we could all find. So this is kind of an extension of the Acquia podcast where I talk anyway with people about Drupal and about open source technology, community and business. And here we are. Let's just talk a little bit about your background, Gabor, in case somebody hasn't heard of you in the Drupal world or in case somebody's checking this out because they need a spectacular new CMS that has amazing multilingual capabilities, right? So, yeah. Gabor Hoichi, you are still the lead of Drupal 6, that major point release? Indeed, yes. What else do you do in your day? So, I work for Acquia in the office of the CTO and I work a lot on Drupal 8 itself. So these days that means working on anything that would uh, move Drupal 8 forward towards release, fixing bugs, uh, helping the configuration management system with the entity system. There's a lot of fun stuff that I'm learning in there. Uh, I also document a lot of what I found, uh, for, uh, find for the community. Uh, before that, I worked on the Spark initiative in the office of the CTO, which was great for authoring experience improvements in Drupal 8, in-place editing, uh, mobile tools, etc. And I'm also, in my free time, I'm working on the multilingual initiative, leading um, uh, these people working on improving multilingual tools in Drupal 8, and that's what this session is going to be about. Right, in all of your free time. Right? Yeah, all, <laughs> all of that free time, yes. <laughs> So let's just talk, before we get to your presentation, um, remind me what your first Drupal memory is. Ooh, so, um, so I used to be involved with the Hungarian web development community site. So I actually set it up with a friend that's called weblabor.hu. And uh, that was running an old um, PHP Nuke CMS. And uh, we wanted to make it look better, so we wrote a whole layer on top of PHP Nuke to pre-process the HTML and reformat it and stuff. And then we figured out that's pretty much um, just fighting against um, against the system. So we started looking for other solutions, and Drupal came to my scene in 2003. And I really liked the system of nodes and the and the flexibility that it offered. I also like the separate admin interface, which was removed two months later and then added back on in, in Drupal 7. That's kind of fun. Um, so yeah, so I found that uh, really great. And I introduced that to the team on the site. And they liked that as well. So we migrated the site. And it's a full Hungarian site. So we needed to make Drupal speak Hungarian 100%. Uh, and, that, and there were issues making that happen. So I was filing issues and solving problems in Drupal to be able to work in different languages. And that was almost 11 years now. And I'm still working on language problems. So I either suck at solving them or there are a lot of them. 
<laughs> so what version of Drupal was that that you taught to speak Hungarian that first time that, around? That was 4.3, I think. Wow. 2003, yeah. So you can take this in the multilingual context or you can take it in a bigger context, but compare Drupal now to Drupal 4.3 when you got started. Oh, wow. Um, I think it, it's worlds apart. Um, I've been to the first uh, DrupalCon in uh, in Antwerp. That was in a hotel basement. And there was like we needed to rent another room so that everybody fits in. There were like twenty or thirty people. That was a whole big community. And um, and now there's there's routinely Drupal camps around the world that attract hundreds of people uh, easily from their respective regions. So I really liked how the community exploded and how I how I see uh, friends everywhere and how we can work together. And I think that that community explosion helped skyrocket the work itself. So now I work uh, with a lot of people on just multilingual, as many people as as have been working on Drupal itself back in that day. So I think I think it's it enables just so much that it's it's hard to even understand. A lot of the people who were at that very first Drupal event are actually still working in Drupal. I wonder if that's, I don't know what it means, but it's somehow a testament to the the strength of the community that, that the technology platform of Drupal has built around itself. Um, off the top, no, see, if I start listing names off the top of my head, then I'm going to forget someone. Yeah. And, and so, but, a lot of those 30 people um, are still in the project, and, uh, and uh, it's great. So let's see. What is your favorite Drupal module? Mm, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, I think... So I think I'm going to be boring and pick from multilingual. Um, my favorite is uh, localization updates, which uh, which we built into Drupal 8, but it used to be a separate module. And uh, and it really solves a lot of the pains with getting your site set up in multiple languages. Because if you set up a language, you need to download translations for every module for a core itself. And the site can routinely have 100 modules. So you need to download 100 translations and import them manually. And if you have three languages, it becomes 300 files. And then when you update a module, you need to download, again, the updated translation. So it's a lot of pain. And that's uh, automated with the module. I think that's, um, that's really uh, a key to, to, to making things work automatically that can be automated. All right. That sounds like a very sensible choice in fact. Yeah. What's the what's the coolest thing that you've built or done with Drupal? Hmm. I think the coolest thing that I've done is co-organizing DrupalCon Sega 2008 with uh, Christoph Van Tom. Uh, that's an event that's that is remembered and is still still often mentioned in the community. I think it was an amazing event at an amazing time. This first piece here is going to be a little teaser podcast for your presentation. So mm -hmm. let's underscore at this point that you are also the multilingual initiative lead for Drupal 8. Yeah. And the session that I saw you present at Drupal Camp Vienna in December 2013 uh, is uh, the one that you're going to do here on Jams Drupal Camp, and it's about everything that's been done and all of the improvements that have gone into Drupal um, <clears throat> 8 for multilingual, but also, you know, you could probably, uh, you, the audience, can probably understand a lot of historical context and, and how hard the problem space is and how far we've come and, you know, how much Gabor and the people working on the initiative have done for us. So, Gabor, Thank you in advance because um, it's amazingly exciting and really, really wonderful. The podcast is going to cut off right around here. And so then we're going to swap over into Gabor's live Drupal Camp session. Um, for the technical details, if you have questions for Gabor or for me, we are easily found on Twitter. Gabor's slides. 
from today are live on SlideShare, and I posted the link to that. That's my Twitter name. Now, I guess I don't have this anywhere on a slide, but my Twitter handle is at Horn Cologne. And Gabor, your Twitter handle is Gabor Hoichi, yes. but I would like you to spell it for everyone. It's G-A-B-O-R-H-O-J-T-S-Y with no Twitter. Great. OK, Gabor, thank you so much. Take care. Have a good one, Gabor. Any last words for us? Uh, thanks again for all those thousand people. It's, re it's really it's always amazing for me as well to go through all the things that we did. It's just outstanding. All right, man. Take care. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Sure. Um, so um, let me switch over to my presentation and then start that up. If only the screen share button would respond to what I want to do. Do, 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 do. You can also do your session in interpretive dance if you need to. Yeah, that may, that may be an interesting idea to do, yeah.